Hello lovely listeners and happy new year to you all. If you've tapped the link and you're tuned in, you're listening to the Community First podcast. This is a part of BMP's vision to give back to society. The BMP Associates Community First podcast is one leg of the firm's community engagement, which is aimed at making society a better place. Our first social topic to be discussed on the on the podcast is domestic violence. Domestic violence is a very sensitive issue and most people shy away from talking about it. But it's high time we have the conversation because the menace is becoming prevalent in the society. It's our hope that at the end of this session, people will be able to identify incidents of domestic violence and to take measures to curb it. I am Bessie Ejewa and I'm one of your hosts for this episode. I'm also here with David William Prempe. I'm a legal associate at BNP Associates. I'm your co-host. Nice to meet you all. Our guest speaker is Mrs. Mami Edu Amwa, who is also a legal associate at BNP Associates. She's had experience working with a number of issues which have domestic violence incidents as part of them. So we are very excited to have her here and we believe strongly she will contribute immensely to the conversation by bringing on board her practical expertise while providing us with real life examples. Mami, you are welcome to today's episode. Thank you very much, Bessie and William. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for answering our invitation. We are happy if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. So as you mentioned, my name is Mame Bani Edu Amwa. I'm a legal associate with BNP Associates. I've been called to the bar for five years and I happen to have worked on a number of a wide scope of um, issues and cases and domestic violence cases happen to be a part of the cases I've worked on. So I'm happy to share my experience um, in this conversation. Okay, so without wasting much time, William, let's get yes, right mommy, into let, it. Yes, let's get right into it. We want, to, we want to learn a lot from your experiences, so... We just want to kick it with, uh, kick it off by asking you, um, what is your understanding? What's your understanding of domestic violence? We, we know you're a lawyer, but we want a lay person to also be able to relate. So can you break it down in very simple terms? What we mean by domestic violence? Okay. So, um, so the layman, domestic violence <coughs> is basically violence uh, probably in a domestic setting and i think when we say domestic violence off the top of anybody's head they think of physical violence like violence yeah. physically but um domestic violence actually extends beyond physical abuse or physical violence and we have we actually have a domestic violence act in ghana which was passed in 2007 and it defines what domestic violence is so i'm going to um, break it down and look at both words so it looks at and um, violence and then also the issue of it being domestic, domestic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so first and um, violence it's not just physical it can also be emotional abuse sexual abuse um, um sexual said emotional sexual physical there's also economic or financial abuse and then the domestic part it all of these kind of abuses or violence happen in a domestic setting. Mm-hmm. And the question is what a domestic setting is. So domestic setting has to do with um, a domestic relationship, which is could be a family relationship or a relationship that is like a family relationship or any relationship in a domestic setting. So for example, if you were in a house and you have somebody like a house help or you have a co-tenant or a neighbor, that would qualify as a domestic um setting or domestic relationship or and it doesn't just have to be a current relationship it can be a current or past domestic relationship so your ex-boyfriend current boyfriend ex-husband current husband so yes this is basically what the law defines as domestic violence so violence these kinds of violence in the domestic setting as i've described yes okay mommy so what about um, a co-tenant relationship? Does that cover or does that form part of a domestic relationship? Yes, that would form part of a domestic relationship. Okay. Yes. What of tenant and landlord? 
that would also form even if they they don't live in the same yes so um like i said it's not just existing relationships it can also be passed so maybe your former landlord can that can also be a domestic kind of relationship yes interesting and and you also mentioned that domestic violence is not limited to only physical abuse yes um, like I said, most people just think of the physical when they think of domestic violence, but it extends to emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and economic abuse. So economic abuse can be a situation where you are being deprived of what is due you financially. So um, maybe as a wife, a husband and wife relationship where the wife also works, but the husband is depriving the wife of access to the money she has earned, where maybe they share a joint account, for example. So that could be an economic abuse. Then you can also have emotional abuse where um, somebody is trying to be manipulative and making you feel like you are the one who is going crazy. But in actual fact, the person is just trying to manipulate you. Things like that could also qualify as um, domestic violence. Oh, okay. Um, so, Mame, you stated that you've had experience working on a number of family related cases that had some elements of domestic violence um, in them um, is there any particular domestic violence case or family related case you worked on that had enormous impact on you in respect of the concept of domestic violence yeah. actually quite a number but I, i'll say right now as i said here to come to me that yeah if you don't mind my share oh we do yes. not mind at all on a no name basis oh yes. definitely definitely so um the first one has to be it was a divorce matter that i was working on and um the gentleman was divorcing the wife on one of the grounds uh, was violence of the the violent nature of the wife and um they were also having to deal with the issue of custody so um as the proceedings were ongoing and um, because of the custody issue they had to meet a social worker to talk to the children and then the parents as well so at one of such meetings the social worker was engaging with the children the mother was there the father was there and i, I as the lawyer was also present and the i don't know what exactly that the husband said but the wife just suddenly started verbally abusing the husband and the next thing we know she was hitting him physically and then because they were having drinks they were in a restaurant then she started she just grabbed a bottle and was about to use it to hit him so the bottle was about to fly basically but was she drunk or something? no she wasn't drunk she was very much okay but um so just as that started to happen we quickly carried the children out of the way there were two boys I think they were both under 10 years and then we had to take them away. And then the social worker tried to talk to the lady um, to try and calm her down. And that was the first time actually seeing um, domestic violence uh, being meted out by a woman. So finding a woman as a perpetrator for me, I knew it happened. I'd heard stories, but actually seeing it for the first time, that was a shock. Um, so that was the very first one. And the second one, um, I got a call from somebody who said that um two young children who were cousins one had sexually abused the other so she called as a um, for legal advice so i had a sitting with them spoke to them and then we agreed that i report the matter to the police and when i brought up the police <laughs> the initial reaction was she didn't want to get involved because you know it's a family matter they're cousins so they're related um so i spoke to her and made her understand that she she doesn't have to be involved i can make the report on their behalf so that the children wouldn't be exposed or anything of the sort so she agreed to that initially and i made the report to the police station and then the following day very early in the morning before i could even start my day i get a call from her saying they want the matter out of the police station and so i tried to convince them but she just wanted it out they said they'll settle it as a family so that's how that one ended yes thank you thank you mommy um i i couldn't tell but you know when you mentioned that the woman uh, was it the woman who pushed for it to be resolved internally as a family matter yes so yes. the woman happens to be the mother of one of the children yeah when you mentioned that i couldn't help but take my mind 
back to last year, somewhere in December, I came across this story on Twitter. I don't know if you are active on Twitter, but there's this account. I think I, I should pull up the tweet um, at Sika Official One. So he mentioned Ghana Police. They have an account on Twitter. And um, let me just read. So they're, they're, they're t- attached to the tweet uh, two images. One is a screenshot. Okay, two two media files. One is a screenshot and the other is a, a video of a man who has um, pushed his wife's head into a freezer and is hitting her. It's very disturbing. Um, the screenshot reads, um, please, I beg you, tag Ghana police. Let's get him arrested. I beg. This happened here in Ghana. I beg you, let's save her. He is called Rafael Abate. The video was recorded by the lady's 17-year-old daughter. That was the only thing she could do to save her mom. Now that we have the video, let's help her before he kills her. I beg you. And strangely enough, someone has commented under this tweet that I'm reading the person's comment. Mm -hmm. You are tagging the police, but what happened after he's being arrested? Will he still be her husband or the police will marry her? Family issues should be dealt internally with. So that's, that's why I couldn't help but take my mind back to this story because there seems to be this notion amongst the Ghanaian community that when it comes to domestic violence issues, it's more of a family matter and you should leave them to resolve their issues and shouldn't make it a, a police case or something like that. But what's your take on, on that, on that um, position? So domestic violence, first of all, it's important to say it's a crime. And I think the Ghanaian community needs to start to understand this, that it is a crime. And so it should be treated as such. And the issue of it being resolved um, as a family, like I said, because it is a crime, it has to be treated as a crime. It should be reported and dealt with by the appropriate quarters and not as a family. And what tends to happen is people are looking to protect family names and they think they're actually protecting the individuals who are involved, but in actual fact, they are not dealing with the root cause. And what tends to happen is people live in fear because the actual thing has not been dealt with all in the name of protecting the family. So I think we need to move from the place where we are thinking of the family uh, name and all of that to protecting the individuals who are actually involved in these acts, the victims who are involved, because a lot of them live in fear. A lot of them, it's it, it's it's a lot of them live in fear, and they are usually in a place where they they find it difficult to actually speak up about it. So we need to report to the appropriate quarters and then actually deal with it as the crime that it is, rather than dealing with it on a family level. I, I agree one hundred percent, Bessie. What do you think? Um, I actually want to ask that do we not think that it's for reasons of fear unemployment the stigma that come with um, making such reports to the police that cause people not to actually make complaints or file complaints at the police station so for example if i'm married to someone who abuses me mm-hmm. and um a stay-at-home mom. I don't have any job to do. I depend on my husband for the upkeep of the family as well as for my own upkeep. I wonder how I will continue to fend for myself and my kids after I report my husband and he's locked behind bars. Again, if my family is one that believes so much in the institution of marriage and I go ahead to report my husband or whoever abused me to the police. Don't I risk being sent, like the center you could, of you could become a villain ridicule. Now, all of a yes, sudden, everyone yeah. is talking about me and I have no one to even talk to about the issue. So I feel like in as much as people may want to report or speak to people about incidents of domestic violence, um, it's it's a very difficult and dicey situation. So I believe people count the cost and say, okay, let me weigh reporting my husband against mm. enduring it for some time. Mm. So I think that everyone has a role to play, though, but 
it still comes back to the individual to yes. a large extent. I, th- I think that's, that's actually the reason why a lot of people don't report. They think of the stigma. They think of the fear. They think of the fact that they might not be able to be independent or take care of themselves. So what next if I report? But then they need to bear in mind that um, domestic violence is such that it is violent and it could lead actually lead to your death. So would you rather stay in a situation where you could actually lose your life, which is a very serious consequence? And supposing you are a mother who has kids, um, this person, maybe if it's your husband who is doing the violence or who is abusing you and you decide to stay in this situation and you die in this the, the situation what happens to your kids what's the guarantee that your kids are actually protected i think as a community we need to look at the bigger picture because um there are dire consequences if you decide to endure it as it were and um this is also where some of our institutions come in because i believe that um some institutions like religious bodies um should come in to be able to support such victims to help them to be able to speak up and um as a country there are also other bodies that we can report to there's also departments of social welfare there's DOFS, that's the domestic violence and victim support, support unit, unit. Yeah. so some of these institutions are there to help victims um in such situations so that they don't feel like they are alone and make reporting easier so that the menace can actually be dealt with yes yes um following from what david said about the twitter story i i also chanced on an article by mynewsgh.com where they reported that the lady had come back to say that all those who were reporting the incidents on social media had actually gone about tarnishing her husband's reputation so it brings us back to the conversation that people really are scared yes yes that's that's really the case and and even beyond just the lady maybe being afraid you know like i said it's it's the way society sees things for all you know maybe when it came out that she probably got a lot of calls from maybe somebody in her church family members asking her why is her husband all over social media doesn't she know that if her husband is out there it's a disgrace to the family and things like that and you hearing something like this would make you want to pull down such um a post so it's also pressure from society. So as um society, we need to, you know, um renew our minds, we look at things and see that it goes beyond just protecting the image. There's also the person, the human being who's involved in the situation. That person deserves protection as well. Thank you, mom. On, on the topic of um life threatening domestic violence where it actually leads to death. Have you personally ex- experienced a matter like that? No, not personally. Or maybe second-hand experience? Yes. Yeah, so I've, 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 I know of a colleague who worked on a case and before, the, the, the it happened a number of times and had been encouraged the person to report. When the, finally, the person finally found the courage to actually make the report, I think the person died before the matter could go for it. So that, that goes to show how important it is to report even early because you never know and i think most people wait for the situation or the abuse to happen a number of times before they actually take any steps but the law actually says that what once is enough it doesn't have to happen a number of times for you to actually make the report so the first time you're abused either physically emotionally financially sexually you can actually make the reports and people should do their best to make the reports that first time because the first time could actually be your last time that's how serious it is okay um i also forgot one factor about status in the society Mm -hmm. so i believe for some people if they see that their spouses or their family members have attained certain positions in society it's very difficult for them to report because they don't want people to say Oh, is this the pastor who actually abused <laughs> his wife, or is this the minister who actually mm. abused someone yeah. who is supposed to be an example to society? Mommy, there's also um the issue of people thinking that um it's only the unemployed or the poor who 
um, are victims of domestic violence. Is there anything you wish to say about that? I think it's actually on the contrary because um, you actually have people who are considered prominent in society also being um, abused or experiencing domestic violence. Um, just that maybe it might not be physical, but like I said, domestic violence goes beyond the physical abuse. There's also sexual, emotional, financial. So you actually have people who are in places of prominence um, being victims of domestic violence, except that probably like you said, because of their status in society, they might not come out to voice it out. And then also um, because, especially when it is emotional or financial, it might not be visible to the naked eye. So people might not actually know that that's what is going on behind the scenes. So it actually happens to a lot of people who are prominent. It's not just the unemployed or maybe poor people who experience domestic violence. Okay, thank you, mommy. Thank you very much. This has been very, very enlightening. Um, I couldn't help, but uh, although we may be out of time, but uh, Bessie, I think we should invite mommy in our next episode because we would want to know more about the laws and institutions that have been established to, you know, cater for victims of domestic violence. We'd want to know, first of all, who and what these institutions are, how responsive they are, and the steps you can take as a victim to bring your problems to their attention and how to go about everything. Mommy, we hope you wouldn't be too busy. You wouldn't have a, 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 a busy shadow well, this that is can't a, accommodate us. This is a us. very important um, topic and it's very sensitive. So I will definitely make time to be here again um, if you call on me. Thank so you very, very assured. much. Okay, thank you all so much for tuning in and listening to our very first episode of Community First, BMP Associates Legal Podcast, where we have legal and social conversations with, with the, community. the community. See you next time on episode two. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.